purists will always argue that open sports cars are for those who favour show over go. McLaren reckons with the new Artura Spider, that's no longer the case. Where in Poser's Paradise on the Côte d'Azur in southern France to see whether they're actually telling the truth. Convertible sports cars are typically compromised by having their roof and half their structure cut away. Extra weight needs to be added to fix the flex and then there's the weight of a complex roof and so on. That change typically affects dynamics, performance and refinement, but not in this case. The Artura Spider uses a high strength carbon fibre chassis that McLaren says delivers the same sort of stiffness, the same sort of performance as the Coupe variant. The open top mid-engine plug-in hybrid is now on sale in Australia, costing a cool $520,000 and change before on road costs, with the first cars expected to land later this year. The hard top takes around 11 seconds for it to stow under the engine cover, and the rear windscreen can be lowered to further amplify the open air experience. Power comes from a twin turbo three litre V6 engine with a small, compact, little plate-sized electric motor sandwiched between it and the eight-speed dual-clutch transmission. Together, they produce 515 kilowatts and 720 newton meters. That's 700 horsepower. And it's enough to propel the Spider from zero to 100 in three seconds. That's the same time as the Coupe. Being a plug-in hybrid, the Artura can use battery power with claim range around 33 kilometers enough for a quiet getaway or a short commute. Inside the Spider looks like and feels like a serious bit of kit. The fixed back club sport seats are snug. The steering wheel isn't littered with knobs and buttons and the digital dash moves up and down when you adjust the steering column. So you always have a clear view of the information and a consistent reach to the fingertip controls for the gearbox and driving modes on either side. And there's a floating multimedia in the center console, which looks like a big smartphone. Okay, so let's hit the road and see if this spider has got any bite. The beauty of the McLaren Arturo, whether it be a spider like this or the coupe, is one minute you can be driving like an eco warrior in full EV mode on the next two clicks of a button, and there fires in that V6. Woohoo! That is an impressive power plant. I was gonna say engine, but of course it's not just the engine. You have, ultimately, the best of both worlds. You've got a little plate-sized, 15, 16 kilo electric motor positioned between the V6 and the gearbox that provides electric drive in town, but also torque fills underneath the turbo engine when you need it. So you don't get the turbo lag. McLaren can put more boost in the engine, can make the engine more responsive at higher revs, make it want to rev higher, and you don't suffer any of that sort of torque, lack of torque that you would normally in a vehicle of this sort of, I guess, performance potential. The open air experience just amplifies the great noises from this powertrain. But it's not a blustery cabin, it's a really still, comfortable cabin. And that's tribute to the amount of aero work that McLaren's done on the car. This car is beautifully balanced with that typical mid-engine turn-in. McLaren's been sensible with the damper settings too. This is a comfortable car around town, and in most cases, the basic suspension settings are enough. We'll see how it goes on a track later. Right now I'm thinking, why would you buy the coupe? The Spider delivers this wonderful open air experience, and there seems to be little, if any, handicap in terms of handling, in terms of refinement, and in terms of performance. And listen to that. This is a very impressive piece of work. 
if this is a view to how plug-in hybrid is going to change sports cars, then sign me up. One of the things I love about what McLaren has done with this car, and it's done with most of its cars, is it doesn't feel intimidating. It's got great sight lines. It's a car that you can see through the corners with. It doesn't have those big A pillars that some convertibles have. It certainly means that you feel at home in this car maybe quicker than you would of other brands' cars with this much performance. This may be the entry level to the McLaren range, but it's anything but an entry level car. There's a great attention to detail in this car. One of the things I really like is the steering wheel. It's got Alcantara covering, which isn't always great for a steering wheel. I do tend to get a bit of manky after a while, but hey, it's a sports car. But it's not too thick. So often now, high performance cars have extremely thick steering wheels. This one's just really just about perfect. It's also not covered in switch gear or anything else, so you're not knocking anything. You're not ha having to sort of change where you want to hold the wheel. McLaren's approach to controls are about making sure that those key chassis and powertrain controls are at your fingertips. In this case, it's on the top of the binnacle here with some rocker switches. On the left-hand side, you've got chassis control so you can change the settings from uh, comfort to sport to track. You've also got an ability to turn ESC off there as well. On the right hand side you've got your powertrain control so whether we want to flick back into comfort which is a pretty good all-round setting to be honest or back into electric for that you know stealth mode it's all there it's literally at a rock of the fingers. It's nice to see these sorts of controls actually able to be accessed and not deep in menus. If there's one thing that misses out a little bit in terms of ergonomics here, it's this lower screen here. It's small, could be bigger, and one of the challenges is that it is down out of your eye line. It's one of those things that I guess it's a compromise because one of the things that McLaren wants to do with this quite small cabin is keep it simple to ke and keep it uncluttered. It certainly does that, but at the expense of that being out of your sight line. Otherwise, it's a really, really fuss-free, uncluttered and, um, and well-presented cabin. Fast, engaging, beautifully built, the McLaren Artura Spider is a proper supercar. And there's something to be said for the extra drama that open top delivers when the engine is just inches away from your ear. Is it better than the coupe? Well, when that fresh air and extra dose of sensory overload comes at no loss of performance, it's hard to argue any other way. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and tell us what you think about the McLaren Artura Spider in the comments below.